So, Assemblyman, first of all, as a lawmaker and as a resident of New York, your reactions to the convictions of Shelley Silver and Dean Skelos? These are sad days for the people of the state of New York, and they're sad days, tragic days, for the government of the state of New York. Uh, these individuals betrayed the public trust, and uh, this is not going to help us in the days and months uh, going forward in terms of reestablishing that public trust, but that is our job. Well, and toward that end, you've got a proposal out that's calling for a full-time legislature with a pay raise to go with it. Tell me a little bit about your proposal. Well, there have been many studies done of um, the problems that legislative leaders have, and it's not just in New York. I mean, we've seen in South Carolina, uh, two speakers of the Massachusetts uh, House uh, have also been convicted of uh, crimes involving corruption and others throughout the country as well. So there's a fellow named Alan Greenblatt, who is a, a former NPR reporter who writes for Governing Magazine. And Governing Magazine is a very reputable nonpartisan magazine. And uh, earlier in the year, he had an article which was, how do you account for the fact that so many legislative leaders are getting in, in serious trouble? Uh, New York uh, has taken the lead in this because six of the last leaders of the New York State Senate have been convicted of crimes, although in all fairness, one had that conviction reversed, mm -hmm. and now the Speaker of the New York State Assembly has been convicted as well. So the two salient points that Mr. Greenblatt, who's an expert on state and federal uh, legislatures, makes is um, too much power and too little scrutiny. So my, my contention is that if we have a full-time legislature, we will lessen the power of the leaders of both legislative houses, and we will increase scrutiny. And how will we lessen uh, their, uh, their power? Well, as our structure is set in terms of the number of legislative days that we work, we will this year work a total of 57 legislative days. And those 57 days occur between January the 6th and June the 16th or thereabout. So it's a few days each week, and then half the year we're not in Albany at all. When we're not there, looking over the shoulders of the legislative leaders, they simply have too much power. So you would ban part-time jobs and ban uh, outside income through those part-time jobs. So for that would that would have prevented or hopefully prevented Shelley Silver's misdeeds. He got a lot of his money through an outside job, a legal job. Okay, and this is a, a proposal that's got a lot of support from a lot of places, including from Richard French, the host of this show, and we've we've aired this conversation a lot. So my job is going to be to play devil's advocate and try to punch as many holes in the proposal as I, as I possibly a, can. I will promise I will be a very good devil. Okay, excellent. <laughs> excellent. So it, it seems like, because you would get a pay raise out of this. Probably. And it seems like, you, so you would be benefiting from the misdeeds of other people. Those bad boys lead to a, more money in your pocket. Well, I think the logic to that argument, uh, while there is uh, some logic uh, to that from a strict logical point of view, but the product there is what's called logically odd because we have a major crisis, and that crisis has to do with confidence in government. We have to take the steps necessary to restore that confidence, and the first step is that New York State needs a full-time legislature for a couple of reasons. First of all, we are 20 million people in this state. We are geographically huge. We stretch from uh, Long Island's Atlantic tip uh, out to the western border with Pennsylvania, which is about a 20 minute drive You're from the it's American a bigger Midwest. Job than a part time legislature can it handle. is a much bigger job. Our state budget is $150 billion, and our gross domestic product is six, $1.6 trillion. That's 14% of the national gross domestic product. So we're larger, we have a larger budget. We have more land and more people than many foreign nations, and we're saddled with an anachronism. We're saddled with a part-time legislature. Your proposal would ban outside employment. Would yes. it ban outside income? No, I don't think it's possible to ban outside income. So you could continue to own a business, or you could make money off investments, or whatever the case might be, as long as you're not working a second job. Um, one's investments shouldn't matter. You can't take people's investments away from them. But one should not be the manager or the owner of a business if that means that that business is going to interfere 
with the job of exercising discretion on behalf of the people of the state of New York. It's a cruel proposition, but it has to be that way. So you wouldn't be basically avoiding conflicts of interest or potential conflicts of interest. If, if I own a health care company and win a seat in the assembly, I'm going to be voting on things that invariably are going to impact the bottom line of my health care company. One will have to disassociate herself or himself from that company in order to serve. Is there one st set level that you would like to have all lawmakers' incomes be, or should it be variable based on the kind of income they're leaving behind? Uh, it's got to be a set level. It can't be based on income that's left behind. That would give a grotesquely unfair advantage to those who are earning uh, inordinate amounts of money. Inordinate may not be the right word, great amounts of money. Wouldn't that disincentivize particularly successful people from running for the legislature? The objective in running for the legislature is that whether one is successful or one is not successful is serving community and serving public. What part of your proposal is also to ban slush funds? Yes. Uh, and, the, and some of the, the money that we learned through the Skelos and the Silver Trials is that they have a lot of money at their disposal to basically disseminate however they wish. Uh, uh, with no accountability. No, and those are known as member items. We had mm, a, oh, Actually, sorry, Andrew, they're not known as, as member items. I know this gets to be a little confusing, and trust me, it took me a few years to figure this out. Um, member items are amounts of discretionary funding that are distributed by individual members of the, of the legislatures. Uh, by and large, in fact, almost exclusively, although there are problematic exceptions, those go to not-for-profits, and those not-for-profits are vetted before the money goes to them. They go for good purposes. Mm -hmm. They support local boys and girls clubs. They support YMCAs. And, and they are good different? things. The, the slush funds are different. So slush funds are large amounts of money that are simply unaccounted for. Somehow or other, the legislative leaders have been able to gain, get, get their hands on large pots of money that they then are able to distribute with little or no oversight. Now, that is one of the problems that uh, resulted in the uh, former Speaker uh, Silver being indicted and convicted. There's got to be a full accounting. Every public dollar has to be accounted for. So what I'm suggesting is that beyond the budgets, beyond the documents of the budgets, where, which are lengthy and not easy to read, there's got to be published on the state websites a straightforward schedule of every dollar that goes to any source with an indication of who initiated that dollar, which assembly member or senator initiated it, and where did it go and how much was it. We have a mutual friend, Richard Brodsky, who is a frequent guest on this show, and every time this subject comes up, he says, the problem isn't with the full-time legislature or the part-time, that doesn't really solve the problem. It's about the legal money that's infecting Albany and infecting government. Things like the LLC loopholes or campaign finance laws that are particularly lax. Does more work need to be done in that regard? Is, is this a substitute <coughs> for that? There is much to be said for that, and I would tend to, dis to agree with, uh, with Richard. Uh, however, um, the issue that we have and what I have addressed in the op-ed piece that was published in the New York Times on Saturday are steps the legislature can take on its own to make life better for New Yorkers. Uh, the issue involving uh, dark money or uh, gray money or money that goes to PACs uh, that's then used uh, to combat uh, people running for office, that's a, an, a thorny and a complicated issue. It's not one that the legislature on its own can tackle and solve in short order. The suggestions I've made are straightforward suggestions that will make a difference. Finally, and unfortunately we're pressed for time, but it doesn't seem like there's much of an appetite for reform in Albany right now. Governor Cuomo doesn't seem to think there is much. We, we've heard that it doesn't seem like it's likely to pass either. Do you get a sense that there actually is an opening for this and that your colleagues want to get something done? You know, whether, whether one has an appetite for change um, doesn't much uh, matter. What matters is that this is what the public demands, and it is something that we've got to do to fulfill our solemn obligations to the public. We've got to make this better, and if we improve the process, we will improve the legislative product. Well, best of luck to you and, and uh, your push for this, and thank you for joining us for a few minutes. Assemblyman Charles Levine, Democrat from Long Island, thanks so much. Thank you, Andrew.